Okay, so welcome to the session. Like I said, today's session is on modeling learning uh, with a focus on science and technology, just to give it a, a context. But lots of the things that we look at today, um, as you'll, you'll see, will be able to be transported into multiple areas of the curriculum and again, multiple ages. So um, this is going to look specifically at, at maybe kind of uh, upper key stage two, maybe some things that you might do with in stage three. But again, it, it's the concepts that we're sharing and how to use Keynote in a different way, um, as opposed to necessarily teaching you a very specific thing. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, in this session, like I said, we're going to be using Keynote. So if you do have um, a second device handy that's going to enable you to play along and have a go at things, I'll pause throughout the session uh, to let people have a play with doing things that I'm showing them. That's usually the point where people might ask questions about, uh, you know, Matt, how do I do this again? Can you show me that again? Please feel free to, to yeah. just drop something in the chat room yeah, uh, and we will do yeah. our best to make sure that we can um, support any of those questions as they arise. Um, so hopefully that, that helps everybody. Um, This is our agenda then. So we're going to be exploring some of the features of Keynote. So we're going to be looking at this um, from a, 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 just a general user interface, like how do you use um, Keynote, um, just to make sure everyone's up to speed. If you've not used Keynote before, just where the buttons are, what those buttons can do, etc. But we're not going to be looking at Keynote today from a, a presentation point of view. We are looking at it as a design tool. So we're going to be looking at some of the features that help you get creative within the application. And then we're going to be talking about this idea of creating models um, as a way of helping students understand concepts, obviously from a science and technology point of view. Um, but again, you could utilize a lots of these features across the curriculum as, as it, it um, makes sense to the subjects and, and age ranges that you're teaching. Just want to draw attention to this. This is a book I put together. Um, which can support some of the things that you're doing in the classroom around learning Apple Teacher. Um, I'm going to drop this into the chat window uh, that you'll be able to get hold of, or you can search for this online. Um, and the idea behind this is just different ideas for how you can get started using Apple Teacher and how you can reflect on some of these um, in your own classroom. So I share this with, with people that I work with just so that they contextualize ideas of how they might use things. So feel free to download it. There's some additional ideas in there. Can be useful as you start to build yourselves up towards um, getting Apple Teacher accreditation. Or if you've already got Apple Teacher accreditation, just some different ideas of how you might utilize that in your own classroom, as well as sharing this with colleagues. It might be that there are other colleagues that you think might benefit from this and you can kind of use this as a support book for them as well. Now, I like to, to add some research into to what we're doing, just to, again, contextualize why you might do this in a slightly different way. Um, multimedia learning is, is basically the process of thinking about not just the use of voice and use of language that we have with students, but also the visuals that go along with it. Um, commonly referred to as dual coding theory. Uh, lots of people have looked into this. This book here by Richard E. Meyer, talks about the, the kind of wider context of multimedia learning and, and lots of research into how this impacts on the brain. But in short, um, the, the outcomes are that if we link visuals to the text, then actually it can help students in transferring that knowledge. So not just being able to recite the knowledge, not just being able to say, well, you told me this, so therefore I'll, I can tell it you back because I can remember it, but actually helps them understand the concepts a lot deeper. Um, when we're using text, we should either use text or um, use our voice, because actually what we're doing when we use um, anything in the linguistic field is replicating it ourselves. So therefore, if you've got text on a slide like this, don't say the, the words as well, because it, um, it will confuse the end user because you're just saying something that they're probably reading at the same time. But actually, the use of visuals whilst you're talking actually supports it. So again, I've put a couple of links um, in the chat window. Feel free to, to take a look at them. One just is an overview of the theory. The second one goes into a little bit more detail and includes a, a presentation, a video presentation from Richard E. Meyer, which, which supports the, the input, but it is a very, very useful um, thing to look over. We're going to look kind of at the, the very end part of this, talking about animation. So how does animation support learners in understanding concepts? 
Um, and you'll you'll know this yourselves from from doing anything. If you've had to learn something which is quite technical, it's useful to have a picture that goes alongside it. There's no surprises that lots and lots of companies invest a lot of time into this. If you look at um, Lego, if you look at IKEA, there's a visual alongside usually just a, a written instruction that can be quite useful. But you often think, well, how does that go together? So actually, if you animated those things, which is where the multimedia aspect comes in, you can really support people's understanding. So we're going to get started then. We're going to be taking a look at Keynote, like I said, and looking at how we can use this to create animation. But again, feel free to ask any questions throughout. We're going to look at just some of the starting points, how we can use images, designing things using shapes, um, adding to work using the drawing tools that exist within uh, Keynote, um, how we might be able to use data to support some of this as well, so we can add that data element to anything that we're doing in science, working in split screen, and then finally presenting our work. Now, I'm going to base a lot of the, the stuff I do around this, this concept. This was a, a video that I created a, a couple of years ago, really, to, that preempted a lot of this kind of ideas of, of why Keynote can be used um, as a presentation tool. Um, and I utilize this in sessions where I want the students to share information to me about their knowledge of a concept. In this um, situation, it's the water cycle. But I want to give them something which helps them talk about the process. So if I just play this video th through on the screen, you'll see there's no voiceover to this. There's no text on the screen. It's just a visual of a water cycle. So we see the rain falling, we see it form into uh, streams that eventually flow into rivers and, and all of this, the concept of it flowing down the hills from the mountains and all of this, eventually leading back into the sea. And it's just a, a rough diagram, but it shows this cycle. And then the sun warms things up, which causes evaporation. And I'm kind of doing what I'm set out to do. I just talk over what's happening and, and the terminology gets used. So clouds then form because of the, the water vapor forming together and then the clouds go over the mountains and then the water cycle starts again. So the idea here is that you're providing students with that overview of the concept and then you ask them to do the voiceover for it or you talk through the process by sharing this on the screen in a similar way that I've just done with you and the students can see what's happening and they can associate the vocabulary that you're using with the things that are happening on the screen. So when I talked about evaporation then the evaporation happens. When I talk about precipitation, then precipitation happens. When I talk about the, the clouds forming, then the cloud comes in. So it's just the case of linking the, the um, literacy side of things and the linguistic side of things to the visual side of things. So how, do, how does this work? So let's jump into the, the kind of concepts behind this. The following kind of few slides are the start of this water cycle. So if I zoom out slightly within Keynote, we're going to talk about the anatomy of Keynote now and how to build this. So along the slides here, slides 8 through to 12, these are the slides that build that animation. And you can see those images kind of appear on the slide. In order to add these images in, if I tap on the plus at the top here and go to the shapes icon, which is the square with a circle behind, you'll see that there are a load of shapes that you can choose from. Now I've just searched within the search icon and just search for cloud. That's going to give me a cloud and I can drop that onto the page. I'm going to make that just a little bit bigger. And at the moment, it's probably the wrong color, although you know some storm clouds are very, very dark. So I'm going to change the color by tapping on the paintbrush. And I'm going to change this under style. And I'm going to change it to, in fact, I will go grey colour just to give it a little bit of contrast to the other clouds that are on the page. So very, very simple from a design point of view. I'm just using the shapes that exist within Keynote to do some design. Now on my second slide, that cloud doesn't exist. So I'm simply going to copy the cloud here. I'm going to paste it onto this slide and I'm going to move it slightly across. And I'm going to go to slide one, I tap play, you'll see that that is just going to move across the screen. So this is this is the basics of what to do. So what we're going to do together now is we're going to build a very simple start process of a water cycle. So on your keynote deck, if I just come to the bottom here, um, if I go all the way back to the very start, I'm going to come out of keynote, come to my, my start page, 
I'm going to tap on the plus icon at the top. I'm going to choose a theme. Gives me lots of themes to choose from. Now, obviously, remembering this is a presentation tool. So there's lots of themes that are based around different presentation styles. I don't want to worry about any of that. So I'm just going to choose this blank white template. If you were doing something like space, choosing the black background, um, equally good. But we'll also look at how we can change the colors um, in the background. So you don't need to worry too much about it. You just want a blank template. I'm going to tap on where the text is on the screen. And I'm just going to delete the text. So if you tap on it and then tap on it again, oops, get that in the right place, it will give you the option to delete. And then you've just got a blank page. Equally, you can tap on the plus down here and find a blank page. So different, different ways to do those things. But fundamentally, I just want to start with a blank canvas. So I'll give people just a moment to just get themselves set up. And then we'll look at doing that design work and then how to build things in. Okay, so hopefully everyone's there. Now, the next thing I need to do is I want this slide, uh, it's going to look like the sky, right? So instead of it being a white background, I'm going to select the thumbnail over here to the left and then tap on the paintbrush. This is where I can change colors. You see, it gives me the option to change background. I'm going to go to color. And I'm just going to choose a sky type color. So this one works perfectly for me. You go with any color you want, as long as it represents um, sky in this case. Obviously, again, if you were doing something like a desert, you might have a, an orangey color. Space would be black. So you can change all of these things. And it, it does change the background color as opposed to it being a shape on the screen. And there's a good reason for that, because if I add a shape, I might accidentally move the shape, and then it, it becomes quite confusing. So this is just the background color of the slide. And the next thing I'm going to do is we're just going to do the first process of this. We're not going to build the whole water cycle. We're just going to build the first process. So the first process is we need some clouds on the screen. So I'm going to tap on the plus this time. So paintbrush for editing, plus for adding. I'm going to go to the square with the circle behind. I'm going to tap on the search icon here. I'm going to type in cloud. You'll see that you'll come up with cloud as an icon. You can also just scroll through and search for this. This is a quicker way to do it. And then tapping on any of the corners of the blue dots, you can make that shape bigger or smaller. And I'm just going to ask you to just replicate that a few times now. So again, I could go back up to plus and add in a cloud here. Or I can just simply tap on the cloud itself and come up with the option to just copy and paste. So again, different ways to kind of solve the same problem. If I copy and paste it, it's going to be the same size. If I add a new one in, it's going to start off small and I just need to resize it. So add in two, three, four clouds and then change the color of those clouds. So each one has a slightly different um, color. I'm just going to use the top palette here of just the, the whites and grays. I'm just going to add a little bit of contrast across them just so they look um, slightly layered. I'm not going for full 3D effect, but... Sorry, Matt, can you go back to how you got the colour for the slide, please? For yeah, the cloud, no problem. please. Sorry. Yeah, no problem at all. That's what we're here for. So I've selected the slide to the left-hand side. So if you see the thumbnail on the screen, I've selected that. So there's nothing selected on the screen here. I've selected the slide itself. And then when I go to the paintbrush, background is an option here to change the colour of the whole slide. So again, just choose whichever color you want to be your background color. And then I'm doing the same process to change the color of the clouds, but I select the cloud that I need to change the color of. So now I tap on, on the paintbrush and I, there are a few more options because I'm not just changing the color of the background, but similar process, just choose a color for the cloud. So I just got three, three different clouds here. And the fact that they're slightly different shades just means there's a little bit of, of contrast there. So they look like they're you know, on top of each other. That's great, thank you. No problem. Now you can go even further with this. So um, it's just useful to know. Don't worry too much about it if you're just, just focusing on getting those clouds. 
But within um, the section here with fill, you could use gradients. So you can make these look um, slightly more kind of three dimensional, I guess, by playing around with the gradients. So you have a look at this uh, cloud now, it's kind of got a, a light to dark kind of feel to it. Um, it's just an option to add in. You can also, if you choose your icons in the paintbrush, have shadow effects as well. And you can have different kind of shadow effects here. So if I choose this one, that actually shows it having a bit of a shadow. So again, it adds a little bit of depth, a bit of contrast to some of those things that you're adding in. So entirely optional to add it in. It, it's a design thing. Um, fundamentally, we're just trying to make it look like the clouds are, are moving across the screen. So I'm just going to, because I've started, I'll just add that in for the other ones as well. There we go. Okay, so we've got slide one completed and we have our clouds in the sky. And we want to show this as movement because the idea is that the clouds move towards land so, uh, fundamentally. Um, and that's where we'll have the rain falling on the mountains. So what we need to do at this point is create um, a transition from slide one to slide two. But the second thing that we need to kind of add in is some off screen animation. So I always kind of liken the, the blue part here using kind of drama talk to on stage and off stage. Anything that's within the blue frame is going to be seen when I play the presentation. Anything that's over here off the blue is kind of waiting in the wings to have its moment um, in, the, in the, the picture. So what I'm going to do is going to go to the plus. And there's a couple of different ways to do this. So we're going to have a look at some different um, ways of building things. If I go all the way back to the very start, just basic shapes, there, there's a triangle. So I could use a triangle to represent um, a mountain. And I could build this change the color of it. Uh, and again, like I said, I'm going to build this off. I'm going to eventually put it off the page, but I'm going to build it on the page so I can see it. Um, again, I'm going to change that to maybe a green color. So I could create it like that. And again, this is great for children to kind of use some of their creative um, thinking, depending on what you're trying to get out of them in terms of a lesson, obviously. So I'm going to use a gradient color here just to make it look maybe like a hill. So that's one way of doing it. I make it change the shape of it a little bit. That's one approach. Another approach is I could search for a mountain range, which is this one here. So I could just use this, which fundamentally is just three triangles put together. So you could use that. And in fact, I think I'm going to layer the two of them together, give it a slightly different effect. Maybe just put some shadow on it again. And this is where we mean before about the design element. You know, children can start to get really playful with this. So that's a different way to do it. And then a little bit later, I'm going to show you a third way that you can do this if you want it to look more realistic, um, as opposed to what we've got at the moment, which is quite cartoon in its effect. What I want to do now is I want to group these together. So if I, there's a couple of different ways to do that. I can select anywhere on the slide and drag my finger down. It's going to select everything um, that I want to select. So similar to using a mouse, but you can use your finger as a mouse. And then I can group those together. So now that becomes one shape. So that's one way to do it. If I undo that, the other way to do it is to tap one shape and then tap the other shape. When you let go, you'll have the option to group them. It's easier to do it dragging your finger. It's more in line with, with how we're used to using a mouse. So again, build some form of mountain range, either by using just the mountain shape or designing something yourself. And then when you're done on this slide, like I said, I'm going to move this mountain range off screen. So it's gonna exist where I kind of want it to appear. So it is in line with the bottom of the slide, but it's off stage to the left. So if I zoom right out, you can see it, it's existing in my panel, but if I tap play now, it's not on the screen. And that's an important part for, for the next step. So again, I'll just give people a moment to just do that. And again, feel free to shout out unmute if you if you have any questions or if you get stuck with something or something too quickly. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm just wondering, you said about grouping the two shapes together. So I've got my two mountains, but I'm just, yeah. what do you, if, if, do you say click on them both individually? Because I'm not seeing an option to um, to group them together. Well, there's a couple of different ways to do it. So if I just ungroup these again. So I've I've layered my two shapes over each other. So if I just move How this have you done that? Yeah, so, so I've layered them up. Yeah, yeah, sorry, carry on. And then if I just... I've got the the top one is selected. If I now tap, so I've got my finger held on that light green shape. If I now tap the one in the background, can you see it's also selected that shape? So you've got a new blue box around it. Right. So I'm tapping the one in the foreground and then tapping the one. But keep your finger on the one in the foreground. Right. So okay. I'm, I'm going to tap that. the one in the front, then tap the one in the back. And then it's both selected. When I release ah. them, it'll give you the option to group. Yeah, done it. Yep. <laughs> Thanks, Perfect. Matt. That's okay. And then when they're grouped, just, just move them off to the side. Right, okay. So that's step one kind of completed. So we're kind of prepped now. So this is just really, really basic. It's going to be very, very basic animation. But the next step is actually the easy bit because uh, the settings in Keynote do the rest for you. So what we're going to do here is if you select the slide over at the top, so the number one slide that you've got here, again, make sure that's selected. So tap on it. Then tap on the three dots here and go to animate. So three dots along the top panel and then animate. And you'll see that you go into this animation pane. You know you're in it because there's a blue bar across the top. Along the bottom is an option to add a transition. So if we tap on that, Lots of transitions here. Now, if you're used to using something like PowerPoint, these are the transitions between slides. And we're going to use a very specific one here, which is called Magic Move. And what Magic Move does, and it will come up on the screen in a second to tell you. So I select Magic Move, tap on X. And it's going to ask me if I want to duplicate the slide because Magic Move basically moves the things on slide one to where you put them on slide two. So if I tap Duplicate now, You'll see over on the left hand side, I now have an exact replica of that first slide. So make sure you've got slide two selected. Move your mountain range into the slide. And again, just it's up to you where you want it to go. And I'm going to move my clouds again just across to where I want them to appear. And they don't have to be exactly in the same place, um, same lineup as they were over here because we know that clouds don't all move at exactly the same speed. We see them overlapping in the sky. So you can do that quite nicely from a design point of view. Now, if I go back to slide one, you'll see they're back to where they were. Slide two, they're over here. And what Magic Move does is if I tap play and tap the screen, is it gives me that animation. And that's, that's as simple as it is. You know, it's just prepping. What do I want to happen between the two slides, what movement needs to occur. So I'll give you just a moment to do that. So again, slide one, where do they start? Slide two, where do they end up? And that's where you're gonna get that movement that occur on your screen. So again, have a go, start to create something like that. There's one other thing to point out, and this is just a useful tip. When you're moving anything on the screen, can you see very faintly, can you see the, the yellow lines that appear? These are alignment tools. So when you're doing uh, things like this, sometimes it's quite useful. If you want the, the cloud to follow the same line, that line along the bottom will help you kind of snap it into place. So it's an alignment tool. So you have them um, to measure if it's in the middle of the screen. So you'll see if I put this in the very center of the screen. It will give me that line across the middle of the screen, it tells me exactly where it is. That's in the very center of the screen because it's giving me that crosshairs um, look on the screen as well. So they're just quite useful just to help position things. But actually, when it comes to animation of clouds, probably having the free movement is quite useful. OK, great. So hopefully everyone's there with that. The next thing we need to do then is we're going to need to add the rainfall. So we're not going to go any further than this because actually, you know, the concept, once you've got the concept, you know how you would build in each separate bit. So we'll do the rainfall next. So slide three, we would have water droplets. But again, we need to prep that. So whatever we do on slide two goes to where it is on slide three. 
So I've selected slide two. Make sure you're out. You don't have the blue bar at the top. That's your animation pane. So if you do have that, just tap done. So you come back to this editing page. Now I'm going to go to the plus again. And I'm going to search for rain. I oh, know. I'm going to search for water. I'm sure there's a water droplet one. There we go. So I'm going to use this water drop. I'm going to resize it. And I'm just going to, at the moment, don't worry too much about it sitting on top, but I'm just going to place probably two or three on each cloud. So you can just copy and paste and just put them directly on the cloud. This will make sense um, a little bit more in a second. So again, just add one and then copy and paste to just add some more onto the cloud. You might want to put some slightly higher, some slightly lower. Again, it will make sense in a second. I'll just put one over here. I might make that one a bit smaller because the clouds are a bit smaller. So again, on slide two, create something that looks like this with just some water droplets. And we're just, again, we're setting this up, but whereas between slide one and slide two, we had this off stage appearance, in this case, we actually need to hide the water droplets within the screen that we're on. So once you've got your water droplets on the page, we simply select the cloud. So you can see I've selected just the cloud shape. I'm going to go to the paintbrush at the top and I'm going to choose a range. So select the shape, select the paintbrush, select a range. And I'm going to make sure that I drag this slider. This, this is the arrangement of where things appear on the screen. And I'm going to make that all the way to the front. And you'll see that now those raindrops have disappeared. They haven't. They're actually just hidden behind the cloud. So we're just using the arrangement to just hide some of those things. I'll do the same with each of those clouds. And again, it's your choice as to whether you want the clouds to be on top of each other or still behind. So this one is slightly behind that first one. But you'll see it appear as you move that across. As long as you can't see the water droplets, the effect is still there. So again, select all of those. So you end up with that initial view. But again, we know that those water droplets are hidden behind. So again, I'll just give people just a, a moment to have a play with that. So like I said, this is this is just using Magic Move. It's just making a model. We're using the water cycles, just an example here of something you could do. Um, and you'll get the kind of idea of, of how it how it flows. I'll show you another example um, a little bit later um, and another way of building these things as well, just to go through just some of the different functions of, of Keynote. OK, so the next thing we need to do is choose our slide over on the side. So we've chosen slide number two. Tap on the three dots, choose Animate, Add Transition, choose Magic Move. It's the same process as before. Tap on the X, give you the option to duplicate the slide. Yes, we do want to duplicate it. It makes it easier than, than adding things in. The other thing by duplicating it, you know that all of those shapes are exactly where they were meant to be. So the next thing we need to do, and I'm going to tap Done at the top, is actually I need to move those water droplets down. So select slide number three. I'm just going to move the cloud slightly. In fact, I probably should have done that last step in the other way around and, and left the, the clouds at the top um, for a little bit longer. But I'm just going to just drag some of these water droplets down. Now, again, you might not want to move them all the same distance because you want to make it look like rain is falling at different speeds. Um, I'll just put that cloud back to where it should have been. And again, you might, you know, it could be a torrential rainfall. They could be moving sideways instead. For those of you that are in Wales and 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 actually in Scotland, rain doesn't always just fall straight down. It usually falls at right angles, very very fast. So again, just going to move those, just so they appear to have fallen. And then again, if I go back to slide two, tap play, 
it looks like the rain has come out of the clouds. So again, it's just playing around with those things. Yeah, I knew, Andy, you'd agree with that. As soon as I saw that you were uh, up in Scotland, it, it's another one of those similarities between Scotland and Wales is the weather. And you also get snow, and we tend to not get snow very often. So you get the benefits, but not the... We don't... None of us get the, the sunshine. Okay, so there we go. So that's that's ha having it rain, okay? And then the process is just keep building and building and building. What's the next thing that you would have? You might have some water to build on the screen. Um, so you might sort of design something which looks like a river. Um, I had the sea down here and then the sun might move in. And again, if I jump back to the actual presentation, this now should hopefully make sense to you. If you look at each individual slide, here's the clouds on slide one. I've moved them on slide two. I then have the the mountain. I've just done a little bit of additional design work, so it looks you know like a a, a rock face mountain, etc., with some grass down low, and I've built the sea in underneath the sea by here. By the way, I think there should be, and I haven't built it in just yet on this one. No, nope. must be on the last one. Um, here, the the raindrops are behind the clouds in the same way that we've just built that. Um, oh, this one is just yeah, it's just a reveal of a of a river coming down but it could just be a straight line it, it's just concepts again remember we're just trying to give students the idea that um the concept is that the rain falls it travels down it, it leads to the sea and, and we're just building that cycle for them to look at so hopefully everyone's been able to build that um within their their slides and you get the idea of how that process works in terms of how you do one thing to the next this next example then slightly different this is teaching children about electricity and and how a circuit simple circuit works the same process here these are just lines so this is just well that's a video of it i'll play the video first so you'll see that the paperclip closes the light bulb lights up paperclip opens and, and the light bulb turns this is the actual presentation then so these are just shapes it's just squares stretched out this is a paperclip which exists within the um, the shapes up here this is a battery which again exists in the shapes on this slide, it's a bulb, which again is just a shape. And on the second slide, I've just added a yellow circle over the top to make it look like it's lit up. And all I've done is closed the paperclip. So I've moved it from position one, which is open, changed it to position two and added a yellow um, circle over the top so that the animation, if I just play this through again, goes from open paperclip and light bulb is off the paper clip closes and light bulb lights up. And again, just a really, really simple way to just show students that this is how a circuit is completed. And again, you could have students create this themselves, depending on their level of, of um, ability or understanding. It could be you're teaching them about this, so you're modeling it to them. So you're creating it as a model that they can watch. Um, and I've done the same thing here using parallel circuits questions for, for um, older children then if I add in more batteries what might it do to the bulb add in more bulbs what does it do to the brightness so you can actually start to build lots of really really useful models um, for students to use so I don't know if there's any questions about about that at all that now it's just a case of you know how magic move works so therefore how could you model different things to students in the classroom the last one I'm going to look at actually is is kind of a cheats way of doing certain things. Um, and that is, if I didn't want to build all of this, so I've used shapes here and I've used clouds and I'm layering things in. What if we wanted to build something using actual pictures? So it didn't look so cartoony and actually looked more real life. So I'm gonna tap on the plus. I'm gonna start a new blank presentation. I'm just gonna use this black background this time because I'm gonna build um, a solar system. This time, instead of using shapes, which you could just use the shapes, but I don't think there's a shape for Mars and I don't think there's a shape for, for Venus and all of that. So I'm going to use a uh, split screen mode. So what I've done is I've dragged up slowly from the bottom of my screen to reveal my dock. So starting off the screen, drag up about a centimetre or so. I'm going to tap and hold on Safari, drag it out of position and drop it to the side of my screen. This now gives me a split screen view. I'm going to open Safari and I'm going to search for a picture of the sun, not the newspaper. Go to images. And now I've got some pictures of the sun here that I might use. Now, one thing to point out 
um, which I think is important to show. When I do a Google search, the, the pictures that I find are not necessarily there for me to use. Um, they're just, it's just a library of pictures. Um, so really we should be thinking and, and practicing ourselves the things that we teach our students about copyrights. So if I tap on um, the images themselves here, what I want to do is choose tools. You'll see I get some additional options underneath. One of them is usage rights. If I tap on usage rights at the moment, this is just all pictures. If I choose one that says Creative Commons licenses, they're gonna be pictures that I can use, okay? So they are pictures that have been put on the internet with a Creative Commons license, which means that we can use them. That then filters out those pictures that I looked at before and gives me different pictures that I am able to use. So that's just a useful thing to point out. Now, I quite like this picture here, it looks quite real. Um, well, I'm sure it is quite, it is actually real, so that's why I'm gonna use it. Same as how I did opening the app into split screen, I'm just gonna tap and hold and see that I kind of drag that picture away. The picture is still underneath, so I've got a copy of it. And I'm gonna drag that over here to my keynote page. And when I release, I've now got a copy of that picture. Now, the one thing you'll notice is that picture has a big outline on it. And that'll make more sense in a second when I go to add in other pictures. So again, you can play along with this or you can just watch, you'll, you'll get the idea. So I'm just gonna add in, let's say Earth. Again, I'm gonna to go to uh, settings, uh, sorry, tools, usage rights, make sure it's Creative Commons, find a picture of the Earth, which I want to use. Again, this is a really, really good one to show the next step. Now the problem we've got here, if I just slide that back across so you can see it big screen, is this picture of the sun has a white line around it and actually that's a black background, which you can see if I drag this and arrange it and just put it behind. You see it's, it's actually, I can't put earth going around the sun because one's overlapping it with its background. So there's another little tip that you can do here within Keynote, very simple. If I tap on the image, so this one's the sun, tap on the paintbrush and choose image. I'm going to tap on instant alpha and then taking my finger, just tap on the black or whichever color you want to get rid of and just slowly drag it down till it gets rid of the majority of the color you're trying to get rid of. There we go. So that works. And then when I release, you can see that that's now got rid of that background. So now the sun doesn't have a background. It does still have the white box around it though. So a second tip, double tap on the image and you have a slider bar that you can zoom in. You can make that picture a lot bigger. Keep it within the blue dots because otherwise you'll lose part of that image as well. And then when you tap done, it leaves you with just that shape with no background. So I can place that over here. Here's my sun. And I'm gonna do the same with the earth, instant alpha, get rid of the white background, tap done and here's my earth. I'm gonna jump a few steps here because I'm not gonna do all of the other planets, but you get the idea. You do the same thing for Venus and Mars and Mercury and, and all of those other things. Now with this one, I want the earth to orbit the sun. Now if I did this as magic move, it works in a straight line. So magic move works from point A to point B in one straight line. So there's a different way that we can do animation here. So I'm gonna put this, the earth slightly off the page. This time I'm gonna to go to the three dots again. I'm going to go to animate and I'm going to go to add action. And this time I'm going to choose this one that says create path. Now it's slightly hidden under my screen, so I just need to move that up a sec. And now I can draw a path as well as I can to try and make an orbit go around. There we go. So I've kind of got this curved orbit on the screen. Tap done. Tap done again, and then if I play this, tap the screen, you'll see that we can kind of build this animation. So again, teacher created, student created, however they want to create it, but we're just building that animation in. Um, and with time, obviously, which we don't have within this session, you get the idea, we could have all of those paths, we could actually draw them as complete orbits around the sun as well, even if they go off the, the screen. And you can actually build a whole solar system here. Um, the, the complexities of, of the, the extent of animation you could do here are huge because actually I could start with the sun being huge 
and having some of the planets as tiny dots and then using magic move we could zoom so that we can see the whole solar system and then the other planets come in here and then you could start them all animating so it can be really really complex but the fundamentals are always the same magic move if you want to move something from point a to point b between slides such as this line draw or create path which is in exactly the same place but just select the object you want to move motion path and then just draw that on the screen so hopefully that makes sense so a couple of different ways to create animation to model learning to your students either through using shapes using magic move or using actual pictures taken from from the internet using copyright uh, free pictures and then in this case using the action of create path rather than magic move so again i don't know if people just want to have a quick play with just just maybe grabbing an earth and just seeing if you can draw um, an animation um, and then obviously that like i said that's usually when questions come up if people weren't sure how to do things so i'll give people just a couple of minutes what i'm also going to do is because that water cycle keynote deck is is quite large it's got some other sort of things within it i'm going to add a link to um a download so if you want to get hold of that deck if you feel it's something that you want to play around with just see the intricacies of how it's put together or, or actually the simplicity of how it's put together is there's just a lot of slides in there um, you can download a copy of that for yourself and, and use that and share that with with colleagues etc if that's something of use Okay, fab. So it's all quiet. So that's kind of a positive. It means people don't have questions, which is good. Or actually, no questions are good. It just means you're busy. Or you might have gone to sleep. So yeah. Um, please can you show how you got the picture of the earth onto the slide again? I can't get it to stay on the slide. Yeah, no problem. So um, what I've done is I've slowly dragged up. So see where the white bar is along the bottom here. I've slowly dragged up to bring up my dock. I'm tapping and holding on Safari and dragging that so that I can do split screen. When I'm in Safari, I do the same thing as I just did to get Safari in split screen. I tap and hold on the picture of the earth and make sure that it, it becomes a copy. Now, if I do it too quickly, I'm not actually grabbing the picture. So tap and hold, make sure that the picture is underneath your finger. So, it, I mean, my finger is on this. I know you can't see it on the screen, but I'm moving that around. When I drag it across to this side, you can see the green circle appear. Now, when I let go, it is on the slide itself. So hopefully, Michelle, that's that's helped with that one. And then it's a case of paintbrush, instant alpha, tap to get rid of just the white background, release, tap done, and then you have that shape without the background. So you have it as a nice clean shape without the, the background. Now you can find PNG images, etc., that don't have backgrounds, um, but then you have to you have to search through even more and it's going to limit the kind of pictures that you can find. So it's just a quicker way to do it. Oh, good question. Yes, how do you adjust the speed? So if I go back to my earth here and if I tap on animate, now you'll notice that if I tap on it, animate also appears here. So I've been telling you three dots and animate. Another way is if you tap it itself, you'll get animate as an option. Both takes you to the same place. Now, because I've already selected motion path, if I tap on this, I get some additional options. So I can change this. So if, you, if your circle is a little bit out, you can change these by just moving the dots. So you get additional options within this. So you can change the path of it. If you tap it again, you'll see that you can change the duration. So at the moment, mine is going to take 2.8 seconds to move from point A to point B. Just by dragging this bar across, you can choose the speed. Obviously, the longer speed you have, the slower it's going to move. It takes that amount of time. You can also change to have this as acceleration. So if you have no acceleration, it will just move the same speed from start to finish, which is a useful thing if you're doing orbits, by the way, because you know it, it wouldn't slow down. It would just keep going at the same speed around. Um, and then you can also have 
this one here, which is called a line to path. Um, for this instance, um, I probably wouldn't align it to path, but I'll give you an example of where a line to path works. If I add in, I'm gonna add in another shape just to demonstrate this. Let's add in, I'll keep within the theme. I'll use a space rocket. So transport, there we go. I'll use a space rocket. Change color so you can see it. Now, if I have a space rocket that's gonna be flying to Earth or Mars or wherever it might be going, I'm gonna use the same process. So again, I can, I'll can i do it this way instead. Tap on the object itself, tap animate, add action, create path. And I want my space rocket to fly off into space. Now if I tap play on this now, as well as my Earth moving, you'll see in a second that the space rocket is gonna take off and it's going to move sideways. Well, actually, I don't think, I mean, I've never been to space, but I don't assume that's how a space rocket flies. So this is what a line to path does. If I select the shape and go to animate, select motion path, and then tap it again. If I tap a line to path now, if you watch the space rocket this time, will follow the line. It won't follow it and stay looking upwards. It will follow it and draw along the path. So for orbits, they don't need to align to the things because actually, you know, the Earth stays pretty much in the same axis all the way around, which is how we get our seasons. But if you were doing something like a space rocket flying, it would follow its nose. Um, same as if you're doing something with like a bee or cars or something. So again, it's just an option to make something look a, a lot more seamless. Uh, the first thing I ever did with a line to path was actually a roller coaster. So having the car of a roller coaster go down a hill and then up a hill, um, usually before you could align it to path, it just looked like it was sort of falling down a hill with the wheels at the bottom. When you align it to path, it can follow the track of the roller coaster. So hopefully, hopefully that makes sense. So hopefully that's answered your question about the speed and then added kind of another touch as well. Okay, fab. Last thing I wanted to show you around this idea of modeling um, is one last idea. So I'm gonna go again to a blank slide. This time I'm going to drag in a picture from the internet um, and I'll, I'll stick with the water cycle just because we started with that one. So oops. I'm going to do something a little bit different. So I'm going to choose um, a picture of the water cycle. Now, excuse me on this one. I'm not, I'm not going to find one that um, has got creative commons. I just quickly want to show you this. So you'll get the idea. Try and use, oops, try and use one that does have creative commons, but for the purposes of just speed, I'm just going to grab one that doesn't. Um, maybe this one's perfect. So I'm going to drag that picture and put this in. It's also a bit blurry, so it's not the greatest picture in the world. But I'm going to use that as a background. Now, the last thing that I can do is actually using the drawing tools. So using the plus icon at the top here, going to the media icon and choosing drawing, you'll see that I have these drawing tools at the bottom. If I select on them, I can choose the size of the, the nib. So this is nice and big. I can choose the color over here. So I'm gonna select this as red just so you can show up. And I'm actually gonna draw directly on the top of this. So again, modeling to the students. You know, if I was doing this as a, as a live session to the students, the picture is my background, but I'm talking over the top to the students. So using it like a whiteboard you would in the classroom, this is quite nice for remote teaching um, because I can just annotate directly over the picture and draw on it. Now, again, similar to before, because those drawings are selectable, so you'll see those blue dots around, I can tap on the three lines, I can go to animate, and this time my build-in is going to be a line draw animation. And you'll see what that does is it traces the drawing that I've just done. So it's like it's recorded the drawing that I've created. So that's one way to do it. A second way, which is equally as powerful, depending again on your student's age and ability and what you're modeling, you start with a blank slide, tap on the plus, go to drawing, and actually, rather than using shapes, rather than using actual pictures from the internet, this time I'm gonna draw the water cycle completely from scratch. Um, now I'm gonna do this very quickly, so excuse my poor drawing. So we know there's clouds. And in fact, if I use the fill tool here, it will fill those clouds in for me as I draw them, which might be a bit easier. 
wow, they are clouds. I, I promise you they're clouds. Um, and then I'm going to draw a mountain. Again, I'm going to use the fill tool because it just helps me create the shape nice and quickly. Um, we're going to have some raindrops falling down. And again, this is kind of computational thinking as well. So we're thinking about sequence, you know, what happens and when. As that water falls, it creates a stream. Let's build that stream in. That then flows out to the sea. I'll draw the sea in there as well. The rain then starts to evaporate. Oops, because the sun's come out. I forgot to draw the sun. There we go. So we have that evaporation. And then with that evaporation, we end up with more clouds. Hopefully that makes sense. And then I could just draw an arrow that just points to say that this goes round and round and round. So you get the idea. Now, because all of those things have been drawn, similar to what I just showed you a second ago, I can select all of those items. You see the blue line goes around everything that I've drawn. Tap on those three dots or just tap on the shape. Choose animate, add build in, go to line draw. And now that's going to play through that whole sequence as I've drawn it. And again, similar to the previous question, if I want to slow that down, if I just go back one step, choose line draw and extend the time that that plays for. And then I can just check, let's see if that works. So this is just going to slow it down a little bit. So our clouds form, they are clouds, I promise you, falls on the earth and then everything builds up as a sequence. So again, just a different way for you to be able to animate things to your students. This one works really, really well um, in terms of remote teaching because you can just use it to model things directly to the students and then animate it for the students to be able to watch over and over again. So hopefully that makes sense. Fab, any questions at all? Um, again, like I said, this has gone through quite quickly, um, but you can watch the video again if you need to just retrack things. Um, can you export to share this on other platforms? Yes, great question. So yes, you can with any of these. Um, in fact, this first one here, this is actually a video. So you see it's got the play icon. So what I've done there, and I'll do that with just these first few slides, is I'm going to go to the three dots at the top. So once you've created your animation, three dots at the top, export and I'm going to choose two things that you can do here. Movie will turn it into a movie that plays or an animated GIF which is is quite useful it can be useful but I think the question is around making a movie so I'm going to choose movie. Now it asks me for the slide range now I've got my whole presentation here so I don't want to choose all of the pictures so I'm going to actually use slide 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12. So I go to all, change the settings here so start at number 8 finish at number 12. Go back to movie options. You can choose the frame rate and the size. I'll just leave it as it is. Make sure that these go to next slides are all on zero because you've already built in your animation. And I'm going to tap export. It's going to create this as a movie. So you're just, it's just going to go through that process. Oops. Apologies, just shut itself down on me. So uh, do the old close it and open it again. So we're going to go through that process again. So three dots, export, movie, select the slide range 8 to 12, export. Hopefully it works this time, doesn't crash. So that's just compiling all of those animations that I've done for me. So it's just going to add them all together without me having to tap on the screen or anything. It just puts them one after the other. After the other. So from a teacher point of view, which I assume Louise is where the question's coming from, you know, if students didn't have Keynote, what would they, how would they be able to see this? Tap save video. That's now saved this into my camera roll. So if I go to my photos, is that video just being created? And there you go, there's your animation that you've just created. And it just plays through as one video. So again, now I could tap on the share icon, depending on where you're sharing it to. If you're sharing it to students through Teams or OneDrive or Google or Shobi or Seesaw, whatever it might be, um, you can just share it directly to them from your camera roll. So hopefully that's answered that question. What I tend to do is I share it to the students and then I ask them to put it into um, a movie making program. So in this case, um, iMovie because I'm on my iPad and I would actually ask them to do the voiceover. So 
um, I mean, we haven't got time to go into this and we'll actually do this in a future session, but they add it into iMovie and then I, that's where I ask them to record their voice. So they they add, um, going back to that multimedia learning idea, they add the voiceover to the visual, combining that thought process for them. And then there's, there's also a good piece of evidence for me to use. But like I said, we do that in a future session where we look specifically um, at what you could do with iMovie. Okay, great. So kind of coming to a close now. Um, the last thing to kind of highlight is everything that I've shown you today is within the Apple teacher uh, section um, in Keynote. Um, hopefully people have seen this before. If you haven't, I'm just going to add the link to Apple teacher um, in the window. What Apple teacher is, um, is a self kind of um, uh, way of learning about some of these skills, not necessarily applied directly to something I've shown you today, but you can log into it. Um, there is lots and lots of information within Apple Teacher which can help you just develop your skill set for things. I'll just jump into this whilst I'm on the screen. So if you haven't gone into this already, it's just create an Apple ID account if you haven't already got one, it's free to create them. Um, when you go into it, there is a set of skills that you can learn. So if we go to learn skills for iPad, you see that there's all ones about how to use the iPad or to use pages, which are previous sessions that we've done as part of the RTC. Lots of things that we've done today fall under this keynote for iPad section. So you see we've looked at adding shapes, adding photos. We didn't necessarily look at charts and tables, but we've looked at all of these other things. When you go into any of them, it also gives you the option at the end to earn your badge. When you tap on that, there's just five questions that you can take, multiple choice, show kind of a, a learning thought process about when you would use the skills, really good as a review thing. Um, and then when you've taken the test, you get given the badge. Um, when you complete six badges, you end up with uh, the Apple teacher accreditation. So hopefully um, that's of use to people. And again, future sessions that we do as part of the RTC, will all look at the other badges as well. So hopefully, um, if you've downloaded the journal, please have a go. I'd love you to share some of your learning as well. So if you have created a small animation today, be it the water cycle, if you did something around space, um, please do share it using the Apple teacher hashtag, um, the Apple RTC hashtag, um, and tweet us in at, at South Wales RTC as well. We'd love to see the things that you're doing. Um, that would be really, really good. And then the final thing I'm going to add into the chat window is a link to the Apple RTC site. Um, What's really good at the moment is we can do these sessions regardless of your location. Locality wise, if we were doing this live, obviously we're based in South Wales, you're probably going to be a teacher um, or student in the South Wales area within 20 miles of us. Um, as we can see on this call today, we have someone joining us from Denmark because we can do these things online. So the link that I've just added there is to the RTC site. The RTC site has all of the sessions that are taking place in RTCs around the country, so both um, in the UK and in Ireland, um, that people are more than happy to join in. So take a look at the RTC site. You'll see a list of upcoming events. They don't need to be on your doorstep. Um, jump in and, and see what's going on and see what else you can learn. Um, but that's it from, from us today. So hopefully that's been of use. Um, I will record, well, the session is recorded, so I will add the, the recording onto our South Wales RTC site, um, but also you can follow me on Twitter at Matt6453, um, where I will also post this as well. So um, if you're on Twitter, you'll be able to access it through those ways. But just really to finish by saying thank you. Um, and finally, if there are any questions, feel free to ask away. More than welcome, Dan. Yeah, always good to have a refresher. I think I've even I've, I've changed things and, and the process I do things. So yeah, always good. Excellent. Yeah, Rebecca, looking forward to see what you do as well. So please do share anything that you've created. Um, and I look forward to seeing you in the next session, which I think is the 1st of February, where we may actually be looking at iMovie. So again, jump onto the site, you'll be able to see some of those things. And have a good evening.